Oh yeah, we got a dress record, don't we? All right, let's take a look at what we're looking at. I said look twice in the same sentence and it hurts my soul. Let's talk nerdy. Oh, um, because this is gonna be a nerdy talk stream. Removing the playlists. I gotta have my orchestrated stuff going for this. What are we starting out on? I always like Bombing Mission as my first song on the orchestrated list. Uh, yep, yeah, no, Superfests is a good and bad thing, but since we don't know what's on the banners in the 30th Anniversary Festival, we may actually just get Lux Chain. And uh, like Maddie Sox said, um, uh, Lux Chain does come back on a banner, and it's actually quite a good banner. Yeah, his CSB and USB show up on the same banner in a Final Fantasy VI event. Not the coming one, but the one after that. Okay, so we get a new skill in this event. Uh, Quake Strike. So if anybody has uh, Tornado Strike, or whatever it's called, 5-star Spellblade, this is exactly the same. Same stats and everything, except it's Earth instead of Wind. So, uh, that's good. Spellblades have a, an Earth attack now, and eventually, in the future, they will also be getting a single target Earth attack, which is a hell of a lot better. Uses power as uh, most Spellblades do, as its primary. Uh, black and Earth. New dress record, we get Princess Cerisa. Uh, it's a pretty cool dress record. I'm not sure I'll use it. I kind of like Pirate Ferris. But uh, I know many people will be switching over to Princess Cerisa. Uh, let's see if I can locate the sprite. There you go. There's our new sprite for Ferris. I like her hair, but there's something about the dress puts me off. I don't think gold works for Ferris. Doesn't, doesn't seem like her color. All right. Uh, new USBs, new BSBs, and new Legend Spheres. We got Ferris, Galoof, and x -Death. Let's see what they get. Ferris gets bow damage and bow damage. Eh. I equip Ferris with swords a lot. I mean, one of her best characteristics as a, a damage-dealing support is the fact that she can use swords. Um, but I guess if you get her USB 2, then you don't really worry about that anymore because it's... A six-star native weapon. It's got a high, high amount of attack on it, but I don't know. I don't. I don't really like that. Um, but it doesn't matter. She's a support anyway, I guess. And it does matter. She does damage. She does pretty decent damage for a support. Uh, minor paralyzer resist and medium paralyzer resist. That's cool. Uh, Gloof monk damage. I uh, don't like ability damage. And it's is that right? Three percent and three percent. They usually get a 9% gloof. 
Come on, man. Okay, so uh, that list is just incorrect. Uh, Galoof does, in fact, get... 9% monk damage. However, it's just monk damage, which means his soul breaks are not affected by that. It is his fault, Huffer. Uh, loses out here, too. Uh, minor blind resist and small fire. The small fire is... Bleh, whatever. Uh, because it gets... That can be overwritten by accessories, which sucks. And small m minor fire resist anyway is only like a 10% reduction, and it's kind of weak anyway. Um, which much prefers something like this, where you get a, um, a double status, because status resists uh, stack. And uh, both of them together basically make her almost immune to paralyze. Uh, also to note, when you go further down dirge, the 7 in the relics for plus wind damage is Ferris LMR. It doesn't have that next to it in the post. Uh, okay. Alright. So it does have plus 1 damage light armor on it. That is good to know. Uh, in x death, we get uh, plus dark damage. This is great. Um, well, I mean, <laughs> it seems great in comparison to the uh, to the other two in the fight. Because these conditions are annoying to hit. You need to use bows. Well, I don't always want to use bows. Uh, you need to be using monk abilities. Well, my soul breaks aren't monk abilities. You need to do dark damage. I'm x death. Everything I do is dark damage. So, um, this is actually good and standard. And he gets medium sleep resist and minor sleep resist, like I said up here. You want double status. He got double status, so XF has a good dive. Um, but of, co of course, that's all second to whatever their legend materials are, and we're going to find that out Find that out in a second. Uh, I'll look at it on Enlears, just because we can get some exact numbers instead of estimations. Oh, I love it when we can use the orchestrated playlist. Uh, physical bow damage. Oh, yeah, I already went over that. Legend material. This is such a fantastic song. Is it loud enough? Tell me if it's too loud. Alright. Uh, Ferris gets support abilities to deal 15% more damage. Eh. Uh, I mean, support abilities she's going to be using. Uh, four star single hit um, five star single hit uh, six star affliction break double hit there you go affliction break finally has one that can you know benefit from an increased damage output uh, burst abilities support single hit now well, yeah, whatever this is kind of a bad LM but it's an LM1 so hopefully her LMR can make up for it um, LM2 increases duration of stat debuffs by 40% as one of the premier stat debuffers in the game, that is fantastic. That is perfect, and it's exactly what we're looking for from an LM2. Um, that's great. So next up, we got Ferris uh, LMR, which is going to be appearing on the banner. Uh, increases damage dealt by 3, 6, 9, 12, or 20% if 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 of the target stats are lowered. Uh, this is good, because that's a flat damage increase. Just straight up damage as long as you're lowering the enemy stats. And as one of the premier, premier stat debuffers in the game, she's really good at that. So, um, at minimum, because uh, you're not really playing the game right if you're not bringing full break to a stat debuff fight, uh, you're at least getting 12% increased damage. At minimum. And I think what they're really going for here is because her LMR appear, appears on the same banner as her USB, um... You're hoping to get the 5, because their USB breaks 3 stats at once for 50%. Attack, Magic, and Mind. The Mind is the key, because the Mind is the 5th stat. So if you use her USB and full break together, you're breaking 5 stats. That increases her damage output by 20%, and she gets the maximum benefit from this. So uh, her LMR and USB 2 are absolutely meant to be used together. Oh, and LM1. Or, sorry, uh, USB1. Her USB1 is a uh, Penta break, which breaks all five stats, obviously. Penta. Uh, so, they're, this is definitely meant to go with her USBs. 
Uh, yeah, I think most people that want to invest in Ferris and don't have her BSB are probably strongly considering uh, doing the gem only pull, uh, part of the 30th anniversary festival, and just n snagging Ferris's USB off of it. Righty, Daddy, pen Penta Break. So, while you're not really looking for damage from your support, and this is a damage, uh, obviously a damage focused LMR, Ferris can actually dish out some deeps. Um, especially with her USB 2 or USB 1. And, uh,. It's, it's not bad that this is her LMR. However, it's not really worth chasing because of her, her status as a support. Remember, one of the one of the defining characteristics of uh, Ferris is that she is a dancer support. I th still think she, other than Tyro, she's the only one in the game. Um, so she can dance at 5-star, which obviously doesn't deal any damage. Uh, so this LMR is actually useless, and her LM1 is a actually just useless. So really... Um, what you're looking for from Ferris is her LM2. So if you don't get her LMR, it's okay. Uh, it's a, it's a nice benefit for her. It's kind of like the, you know, the N element LMRs for people. It's like, okay, this is better than her LM1 and I'll use it. But it's, uh, it's not like, this is going to make me super strong. Uh, while Ferris's LM2 is that. So if you're pulling on the Final Fantasy V banner, you don't get her LMR. Uh, don't fret. It's not really, uh, it's not really what makes her her tick. Uh, next up, we have X Def. Uh, increases dark damage dealt by, I'm guessing, 10%, which is fine. Uh, LM2, nice. 35% uh, chance to dual cast dark abilities. Uh, when the dual cast is LM2, it is a 35%er. So we know what that question mark means. Um, that's good. I mean, 35% chance to dual cast is something you're not going to say no to on a DPS character. Uh, and next up, we have what I talked about briefly on Ferris's. You see her LM2 being great in uh, Magicite? No. Uh, something I need to... I will get to, and I'll, I'll reiterate once I get to uh, talking about the Magicite dungeons. But um, stat debuffs are reduced by 80% in Magicite dungeons instead of the normal 50%. Uh, stat debuffs are actually just piss poor. Uh, as far as effectiveness is concerned in Magicite Dungeons, you're actually just more, uh, you're, you're, get more benefit from just adding another healer to your group and, uh, mitigating, you know, or reducing threat that way, uh, instead of using a, a debuffing support. Ferris is actually a, a pretty poor Magicite support, but not as bad as most debuffers. Like, like, Setzer's just flat awful, but Ferris, on the other hand, um, can actually apply uh, Imperil Wind with her USB 2 or her Super Soul Break, and that's actually worth consideration because that increases your damage output. And if you're going to do that, you can also turn her into an Entrust uh, bot. So she actually can do something in Magicite, but you're not using her for, uh, for her debuffs. And that's, uh, that's why she fails, because barely anything here works all that great. Van is probably the only debuffer that can still be re relevant in Magicite. Uh, yeah, because... And I, I guess that's that's why I consider Van a damage-dealing character with a side of support, because that's why he's relevant there. He's not elemental deals a ton of damage. Um, it just has the added benefit of being a debuffer at the same time. Uh, okay, so we, we're at the LMR of XDef, and... I mean, Attached Dark at the beginning of battle is fine. Especially because... Uh, his BSB, which is actually pretty good... Um, doesn't have Attached Dark attached, <laughs> attached to it. It's... It makes it a little better. It's one of the, one of the things that makes XDef good. But you're probably not going to be... Um, well, this is LMR, so it doesn't matter. So that's for people pulling on Banner 2. Uh, let me see. Well, who's next? We had Galoof, right? Yeah, Galoof. Monk abilities deal more damage. Again, with the with the ability school. That kind of... It's kind of crummy. Um, 
LM2, attack increased for each hit dealt with monk abilities. That's a really bad LM2. Uh, but his LMR is fine. And his LMR is on the second banner? With x -Deaths? Yes. Okay, so his LMR is fine. Uh, I mean, chance to dual cast monk abilities. That's good. Oh, XF BSP does not appear on the banner? Oh, okay. But it's fine because his USB doesn't have uh, and dark on it either. I thought it did. But it does not. That's weird. That kind of stinks because I thought XF's USB is actually good. And it would be really nice for it to appear here. Strike against banner 2. Um, so Galoof is not a good target for Legend Diving. His LM1 and LM2 are both bad. Uh, his damage increase is Monk Abilities, which is bad. Uh, he doesn't have a good status resistance, which is bad. Uh, just one of the worst uh, Legend Dives in the entire game. Good LMR, though. Worth chasing? I, uh, it's tough to say. I I don't know how beneficial starting out with Endark is. I, I think it's more beneficial than I think it is. Because there's also... There's the fact that he doesn't get Endark on any of the, the powerful things that he does. Mystery your evaluation of Celeste Legends Eye. When you have a little extra time, could you summarize it for me? Sure. Um, Lone Wolf, if you could kind of try to interject that in like a question and answer session that I usually do at the end of previews uh, I can obviously go into it then we want to want to keep the train rolling because once I get sidetracked I get sidetracked and it's not good for anybody um, okay let's uh, let's move over to the banners Oh boy, uh, this has been a long time coming, right? Uh, on my stream, let's switch over to it for a second. We have in the bottom right-hand corner of the stream my last draw target, which was Shield of the King, the Final Fantasy XV event. I spent 50 Mithril on it. I was pretty pretty pleased with what I got. It was I, you could consider it a whiff, but at the same time, it it wasn't. It's a it's a mixed blessing, but it's okay. Uh, I only spent 50. Uh, and next to it, ooh, Gutsy, congratulations. You're going to be happy with that. Aphmau USB is a fantastic soul break. If you're going to go 1 of 11, that's a super one to get. All right. Uh, in the bottom right-hand corner, there is the next draw target. And you can see from there that it is for Princess Saritza and Bartz. And that is the banner that we're going to be looking at now. It will be drawn on by me and the announcement of 30th Anniversary Festival coming out does nothing, absolutely nothing to uh, stop that from happening. And we're going to see why in a second. Uh, first off, we have Bart's, and this is this is why. Uh, in, can you get the English banner yet? Uh, yes, I can. Um, I'll get that later. Um, we just had the release... By surprise, uh, the release of the Magicite Dungeons. And we've been talking these up for a while. We've done a lot of preparation, and a lot of my event previews go into preparing ourselves for Magicite Dungeons and getting our teams up to snuff uh, so we can at least get our 60 second clears and hopefully, eventually, or maybe right away, get our 30 second clears. Um, Bart's goes a long way towards that. The Chicken Knife, his USB, 10 single target, Wind, Water, Fire, and Earth. As you notice right off the bat, this is going to be focused towards four different Magicite Dungeons, which is a benefit that you do not see on anybody. Um, most of the strong things that we go after... Um focus on like one element or two at most say for Celeste can can do two well Delita has three elements but he doesn't really do it that good 
and that's what I that, I guess that's my my point is um, and as I was gonna as I was going to say as I went on is that Bart's doesn't just hit four elements uh, he hits four elements and does it really 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 well um, Exmo spellboy Spellblade Barrage. Self attack plus 30% and quick cast. Uh, he gets a times two cast modifier uh, during his 15 second Spellblade Barrage. When using Wind, Water, Fire, Earth Spellblades. And it, he. Uh, when. When. Oh my god. This is. These comma splices are screwing with me. That's not an English fail by me. That's an English English fail by what I was reading. But I do apologize for not correcting it as I was going. So we're going to read it off of this instead. And Lear does a better job. X. Spellblade Barrage. Uh, attack plus 30%. Cast speed times 2. Cast Wind, Water, Fire, Earth Barrage after dealing Wind, Water, Fire, Earth damage with a Spellblade ability. So already, this is pretty good. Attack plus 30% and cast speed times 2 is a normal X mode. Where you get attack plus 30% and then you get a cast speed modifier when you use an ability. Let's see if I can find something that's similar to that. Um, overcome Pass is high quick cast. Show me who, who gets something like this. Refia? Oh, man. Whoa. Nice host. Uh, Final Fantasy V is next week, yes. Um, come on, show me some X modes, please. Aggressor. Yes, I remembered. Gabrant. Okay, there we go. Aggressor um, is an X mode, not named X mode, but an X mode. Um, yes, Final Fantasy V is before Final Fantasy IV. Um, Aggressor is Gabrant's X mode, where he, whenever he does a, a dark attack, he gets Quick Cast 1. Quick Cast 1 multiplies your cast speed by 2, so it halves your cast times. So already. Oh my word. We get cast speed times two, so it doesn't even have a condition. While this X mode is up, he just gets cast speed times two. You don't even need to do a certain type of attack, which is nice, because he does uh, many different types. Also gets attack plus 30%, uh, but I believe Gabranth also gets something on that on his entry. And you get a chase involved. So. Does the playlist have any Final Fantasy V on it? No, because uh, I have actually not played Final Fantasy V, so I'm not really... Uh, I don't have any attachment to the soundtrack, so it, it's not really a priority for me to put it on. Um, it, yeah, that would actually would have been a pretty good comparison, Ricky. Oops. Anyway. Um, so in addition to having a strong rapid fire X mode, he also gets what we call a chase. Uh, whenever he does something, he casts another ability. And then we're going to take a look at that. Well, Battle on the Big Bridge is different. That's not a Final Fantasy V song. Well, it ri originally was, but it's been adapted so many times. It's basically a, a Final Fantasy everything song now. Um, and that is on this playlist. So I'll, I'll actually queue it up. No, I won't, because I don't want to go searching for it. It's a big playlist. Okay, anyway, Spellblade Barrage. Uh, there are four different types of chase, and the chase depends on which uh, Spellblade that you use with them. 
You use a wind spell blade, you do the, the wind spell blade barrage, and, and so on and so forth. Wind, water, fire, earth. This is, these are his four primary ele elementals. Um, so he automatically, as an interrupt, instantly casts this ability after you use one of those spell blades. Uh, the first one, and all of them, do the same exact thing, just different elements, where he randomly deals two or eight random attacks that do a 0.4 multiplier each. So small multiplier. Um, so you could just do a 1.2 multiplier attack, or uh, you could do a 3.2 multiplier attack. Uh, the median here is uh, 2 of 8, and 50% each means you're going to uh, average five random attacks over, you know, a long enough time span. So, um, five times 0.4 means you can say that these spell blades, or these, these chases have an effective uh, 2.0 multiplier uh, addition on top of whatever you use, um, which is actually quite strong. And it's especially strong because it's added onto an already good X mode. Um, so that is... That, that's an awesome benefit. Uh, do you know what happens when you, with the chase, if you say uses BSB1 uh, commands, which are dual element, which chase is chosen? Whichever one you do damage with, I believe. Um, so, usually uh, the boss will take different amounts of damage between the two elements. So, uh, I don't know what his elements are, but let's say uh, his first... Uh, Spellblade is wind and fire damage. If you're just doing 1% more fire damage uh, with, the, with the, the burst command than you were wind damage, then it would be a fire damage attack and you would chase with fire. Uh, water, wind, and earth, and fire? Okay. Uh, yeah, Ace doesn't... is a shit chase. It's, it's like... It, it's there for flavor. It's not really there to do damage. Because it has a 1% chance of being powerful. It's, it's flavor. Oh yeah, Paranoid brings up a good point. If you're hitting neutral, uh, completely neutral, and you're doing the same amount of damage, uh, then the first one listed. Uh, and use Unleers for that, because that's, that's why I like Unleers so much, is because it's, it's structured. It's structured according to what is mined, so it it will allow you to apply rules like that to it. Okay, so we get Spellblade Barrage for 15 seconds after doing your 10 single attacks. Um, and that's fantastic. That's fantastic. Uh, by itself, this makes Bartz a potent member of many, many Magicite teams, and that's something that we don't see uh, from anybody, really. Uh, there's a couple that can do two really well, like uh, Cloud of Darkness or uh, or Sid Reigns, for instance. But I don't think there's anybody that can do four elements as, as well as Bart's can. And uh, that's, that's a value you don't see very often. Um, so obtaining this one relic is like obtaining four relics. And... Doesn't that seem overpowered? Am I wrong to think that that's overpowered? I don't I don't think so, but I mean you decide um, Next up We have Ferris's USB or USB 2 uh, As though she needed a USB 2. I, I get that her USB 1 wasn't really a, a spectacular thing It's it's more like a glorified super soul break, but the fact that it was on Ferris wh Who is in insane? Well, it's it's not overpowered in regards to the content we're facing. It's overpowered in regards to the balance of the things that we have access to. That's that's what I mean. See, if you considered everything that we're you know getting access to on banners as being you know a, at a relative power level, I I personally believe that Bartz's exceeds um, it exceeds. That, that power level and becomes an outlier. An outlier worth worth devoting some resources to. As long as it showed up with some good stuff. And, you know, that's why we're looking at the banner to make sure that we're not chasing Bartz's overpowered USB for no reason other than end up with an inventory full of shit. Um, so that's why we're taking a look at the banner. Uh, but Elgate, Lulu absolutely can't. She's, she's trash. 
Lulu is trash at doing four elements, and, and Delete is uh, arguably almost as bad because uh, most of this elemental stuff is going to be taking place in Metrozide dungeons, and Delita's BSB is awful without the use of Cloud's USB, and obviously you can't RW in Cloud's USB on him uh, in Magizite dungeons because we have no RW. So both of those are not options. Those are They're awful, and I guess that's my point, is Bart's can do four elements really frigging well, and Delita and Lulu are awful and not even worth considering. Um, next up, we have Ferris. Uh, we have nine single target, wind, non-elemental, range, physical, and peril wins. So already we have a wind super soul break, and next up we have enemy large, attack, magic, and down. Uh, if there's any downside to this, it's a very minor one, it's the fact that it just completely uh, takes a dump all over our super soul break, which also appears on this banner. Uh, area of effect, wind, lightning. Uh... Yeah, because we want to deal lightning damage and inflict the Imperial Wind at the same time. That's a real good idea. Um, this is Area of Effect. Uh, wind, Imperial Wind, and her USB is uh, Random Target, Wind, Non-Elemental, Imperial Wind, with an added effect of Enemy Large, Attack, Magic, Mind, Down. Uh, you don't... Yeah, it's a USB, and obviously it's meant to be better than a Super, but it... the same time... At the same time, you don't want it to completely trump a super in every single way because it makes that investment that people had put towards getting those supers uh, in the past, and it just overwrites them. It means that it was it was just a plain bad thing to get that uh, that item in, in like relative to other super soul breaks that actually complement in some way and you could you could mingle it in there in like a, a full throttle situation like okay I can use these together and it's pretty cool um, there's really just no reason to use her super anymore uh, if you have her USB obviously uh, attack magic mind down is is strange I, I would I mean at first glance I would prefer that because mind is only seldom a useful break, while attack and magic are almost always 100% awesome. Uh, you would prefer that it was like defense down instead of mind, but it's also not bad at the same time because it works together well with her uh, silver wool. Thank you very much for the follow. At the same time, it works well with her LMR. Uh, exactly, Dragon. It's there for it's for, there for stacking. Uh, it works with our LMR, and it works for stacking with other things. Because as of now, I believe this is a unique debuff. Uh, Attack, Magic, Mind, all three of the offensive um, just means that, you know, this is always probably going to be useful in any any situation other than Magicite because of the 80% re reduced uh, effectiveness of debuffs like this. Um, so this is a good USB. It's not as, like, powerful overall as Bart's, but it's still fantastic. Um, I'd say above average for a USB, and that's, that's significant. That's significant because already she had a, kind of a, an average to m maybe a little worse than that USB, but was great because it was on Ferris. Now we have an above average USB, which is even made even better because it's on Ferris. Ferris is just a, an awesome character and uh, no one should feel bad about getting anything anything for her. Any excuse to use Ferris is a is a happy occasion. Uh, so we got two good USBs and uh, things that I would personally be very happy to see show up in my polls. And next we move into three BSBs. You still do not see Curry. And you won't for a while. You won't for a while. Taju, Ichi Steel Don Coat T C Kare Brown L U L surprises me every time. <laughs> um so we're moving into the BSBs now. Uh Bart's is great sword. Uh Bart's because Bart's first two BSBs were just um, well. His first is just not that great. It, it it had uses sometimes, but 
totally power creeped out, especially with the ability upgrade. What's funny about Bart's first USB is that when his BSB originally came out, people were like, oh, I can I can use his BSB one to use Spellblade abilities with all four of these helmets, can't I? That's awesome. Uh, and then the ability overhaul came out, and er everyone was like, "Oh, well, we have four hit Spellblade abilities now, don't we?" Well, at least we get, at least we get other elements, right? Like Earth and stuff. Um, but no, we, now we have a, a four hit Earth Spellblade in, in Japan too. So is uh, it, Bart's BSB one is actually just not that. Not that good anymore. So, and his BSB2 is really... It's lacking. Uh, it, It's fine, and it's good for giving him and water to use with his USB. Uh, definitely not as not as creeped out as his BSB1, but it, it was not as strong as other, like, main character BSBs at the time when it came out. And everyone was like, what, what is up with Bart's? Why do they hate Bart's so much? Well, this... We finally get our answer. Uh, it's if they were sleeping on us. They wanted to give us Bart's as USB, uh, which turned him into a, a, a batty bastard. And uh, his BSB3, so third time's a charm going on here, um, which is actually a really good burst with uh, eight single target earth, non elemental, physical. Uh, grants him an earth and burst mode. Let's take a look at those commands. We have a four single target earth wind. That's important. That's important for use with his, BS, uh, his USB. Because these are wind spell blades, of course it's it's definitely not as good as Earth because you're not getting the 50% or 80% extra damage from the end Earth, but it's still pretty good together. Not for Magicite, but there's going to be other situations where you want to use it. And self spell blade damage uh, plus plus two, not plus two, uh, two times. So uh, spell blade damage plus is 15% extra spell blade damage. Uh, it's the same status that we see on Celeste's first command. It's great. It's really great. Uh, so this is great for dealing earth damage. And next up we have on the second command, we have three single target earth wind physical damage. Okay, that's fine. Um, you, we often are able to, uh, to cap on our two hit, but three hit are less likely. So I don't really view three hit as that far below four hit. So you're gonna want to love. You're gonna love using both of these uh, in conjunction with each other, and it's gonna be better than, uh, you know, using your your typical buff command too. Um, because there's really not that much penalty, if if at all. Uh, and self attack and resistance plus thirty percent. I believe this is a Makio Shisui uh, unique status. So this is something that can stack with attack and resistance buffs. Um, so this is awesome. This is great. Like. I, both of these commands are really relevant, and both of them are Spellblade commands that can be used with his USB. Uh, what's nice about Bart's is, if you get his USB, he becomes good. Or not, not just good, great. But if you have other things for him, like his BSB-3, then he becomes a, a basic god of dealing Earth damage, because he can become uh, one of those Entrustbot characters, where you get an Earth, uh, from his BSB, you get strong Spellblade commands, and you have the Spellblade Barrage X mode from his USB. So just funnel all of your Soul Break usage into him, and he's just a huge DPS engine. And the same could be said about his BSB too, con uh, in conjunction with his USB. Big, big, big time water damage. Um, doing wind damage. You don't even need any of this shit. Because Bart has access to a six blade bel spell blade ability called Snow Spell Strike, which eventually gets upgraded to four hits, uh, which and its huge, huge multiplier can take absolute advantage of those four hits. So just with his USB, he can turn into a, a monster. Uh, so that's Bart's is the modular character as long as you get his USB, and then it becomes okay. Is it, this player is a good member of this party, and then you can plug in some stuff to make him. Uh, a linchpin of those parties. Uh, so Bart's BSB3 is good. It makes him one of the best earth earth damage dealers in the game. Uh, and next up, we have more earth. So if anyone's like lacking in earth, myself included, because I did not get 
either the OSB or BSB of Gladiolus in the Final Fantasy XV event, I still have no worth. Zero worth damage. I don't have Ingus either. Uh, when I pulled down the Final Fantasy III event with uh, Onion Knight on it, all I got was Onion Knight and Dash. All I got. Um, but I missed on Ingus, so I'm, I have zero earth. I, I just can't deal earth damage. So this banner, just on that uh, merit alone, becomes a good banner for me. So this is, this is why I'm so excited about this banner, is because not only is it fantastic, fantastic for a strong A-team situation, a multiple A-team situation, but it also um, plugs a hole for me in my big, big earth lack. Uh, lacking of earth damage. Does TVB BSB count as earth? Y yeah. Yeah, it's on earth. I mean, it does earth damage. It's not good. Uh, well, it's it's average. There's just a lot better available. I mean, it's certainly better at, like, Bart's BSB 1 at dealing earth damage. Because that, that, and earth counts for a lot. It really does. 15 per, or 50% and 80% extra damage is, is significant. It, it really is. Okay, um, next up, Dorgon and Dorgon's armor. And here's a very important part about this one, is Dorgon's armor is plus earth damage, heavy armor. Um, really good, uh, especially pulling on this banner, because Barts and Dorgon are your earth damage dealers, and they both use heavy armor. Um, so that is a good relic, and let's go take a look at the burst itself. Area of effect and peril earth, uh, and we see right off the bat, this is, doesn't deal any damage, which kind of stinks, uh, but it's okay because I believe the party defense plus 30% is a significant buff in the right situations. Um, and let's go take a look at the burst commands and see if it, it can overcome this lack of damage that we're seeing on the uh, burst entry. Uh, and if it can't overcome that, then it really just becomes a vessel for other people to deal earth damage. And hopefully, if you pull heavy, I pull heavy, um, you end up with parts as USB or BSB frames are dropping. Oh, is the audio fine? Okay, if the audio is fine, I, I don't care. Whatever. I just hope they get their shit together. I, I get that we've used two terabytes of bandwidth this month, and they're probably really unhappy with us for that. But, um... But you don't have that in the contract, so, um... You know, don't do this. Don't fucking do this. Okay, um... Alright, so we're gonna take a look at Dorgon's BSB. They? ISP. Oh, uh, Spectrum. 
uh, Los Angeles ISP. They were just a, a name change from Time Warner. Okay, so burst commands, we have four times single target Earth Wind. Okay. Uh, night damage, plus two, and these are night commands, so this is really just uh, a carbon copy of Bartz's first command, which is, you know, fitting, considering the fact that they are father and son. Um, which is good. That's fine. That's great. Uh, and next up, we have Self-Taught Dust Sword, which is three times single target and self-attack resistance plus 30%. Uh, carbon copy. Fitting. Uh, no. No Fios. I wouldn't use Fios anyway, because I think Verizon is even more garbage than Time Warner. Um... Uh, ISPs are are literally one of the biggest cancers of our society. Uh, or tele telecommunications companies, to put it more broadly slash specifically. Um, this is fine. This is great. And you know what's nice about this is that his entry gives him plus 30% defense. Uh, as well as plus 20% defense from burst mode, which works well in the future. Um, because we eventually get access to something called Earthbringer. And if anybody has heard me talking about Guardbringer, the holy five-star uh, knight ability that does four hits of holy damage as long as you have a high enough defense, then getting defense buffs is a really nice thing because Earthbringer is the exact same thing except Earth damage. So this turns Dorgan into an actually legitimate, strong Earth character. Uh, exactly what I wanted to hear when I'm ta looking at this banner because thank you, I need Earth damage. Bart's and Dorgon are excellent earth damage dealing characters. Dorgon even party buffs at the same time, and buffs are awesome in Magicite Dungeons. This is the answer to my problems. And yes, it is a, it's a specifically created problem. I've actually, uh, one of the reasons why I didn't go as uh, deep into the Final Fantasy XV banner is because I was not as... Uh, I didn't want to be as hardcore going for stuff, uh, a banner with Earth stuff on it. Um, I would have been happy if I'd gotten it, but because I, but that I didn't, and um, I did get other things instead. I was said, okay, well, I don't really need to pull anymore because uh, Gladiolus, while a, a very good character, uh, Celeste's Earth damage, eh. uh, her defense is actually her natural defense is actually quite low. Um, and why Ether when I can home? The thing about Celeste is I don't really believe that she's that competent at dealing damage that are that isn't ice or holy, uh, unless you're talking about Snowspell Strike. That's a that's a different bag of tricks. And the problem with that is she already does good ice damage, so that's one component of Snowspell Strike that doesn't really add that much. And the second component is Wind, which Golem says, yeah, Celeste, you're, you can't do this. What do you think you're doing? Um, so really, uh, Celeste to me is an ice and holy character to me. She doesn't really do that much damage on the other elements, even if she has access to them. Uh, so this is a good relic. It is plus earth heavy armor. Awesome. And it's a good soul burst. Uh, sure. Uh, I'll take it. I mean, I need earth damage. Uh, I know a lot of people need earth damage. This is actually a pretty good pickup. Um, so let's take a look at the third burst. Because we've, we're two in the, two in the hole right now. Uh, third up we have a return. Uh, which is Bart's BSB2. And you just heard me talking about this when I was talking about his three. Um, this is an okay burst, but while his BSB3 is good by itself, uh, his BSB2 is is okay, but definitely there to, to provide a huge boost to his water damage potential uh, if you have his USB. At least that's how I view it. I mean, the entry is the exact same thing. A single target, water non, and water burst mode. Same thing as this three. We'll take a look at the commands. You see that they're not as good. Uh, we have one single target 
uh, physical damage and steel power. I, I guess that's fine. Um, I could bring this to uh, a magical water team. The thing is, physical water is so much more prevalent, especially for me personally, uh, and why I'm not as thrilled to if I walked away with this banner without his USB and just his BSB one or two. I would be kind of kind of bummed about that. Uh, because I already have a physical team, so what that would mean I would be more likely to run a 50% attack buff, which um, doesn't doesn't stack with steel power. Uh, so that's that's a, a command with situational use usefulness uh, kind of written off in situations where it's not. And then just a, a standard four times water non-elemental physical. At least it has that command, and that's why I think it's okay, because at least it has that four times single command. Uh, the problem with that is it eventually this command doesn't even become that all that useful because uh, the five star water spell blade does more damage than this and it eventually will be get buffed to four hits so it will just be straight up better um, which is not the case with his BSB3 because this is for earth wind, uh, earth damage uh, and wind I guess I guess that's something um, and spell blade damage plus 15 percent so that makes that worth using. Uh, you could alternate that if you'd like um, to get the spellblade damage on the first attack of your five star ability and then get it on the recast of your first command um, to refresh the buff and then you know go back and forth and always have that plus 15 percent damage so that's that's a different dynamic that you wouldn't see here this just be becomes uh, trucked completely by uh, the five star water spell blade. <clears throat> um, so really what this is to me, is a fair water soul break but you're using it with Bart's to get him water to use with his USB it it definitely is worth using together uh, for an entrust bot if you have his uh, BSB2 and USB in a water uh, yeah a water vulnerability situation so that is still a good thing to see here um, because it does go well with the banner Uh, so there's our BSBs. We have two, uh, in my opinion, good hits. Obviously, I, I mean, we're it, it's a descending list of priority. Uh, Bart's BSB3 is uh, definitely the best of the three. Then move down to Dorgon's, and then I'd probably move down to Bart's BSB2. However, I think Bart's BSB2 moves up on the list if you pull his USB. Okay, next we move into the Legend Materias. Um, Bars' Maximilian is extra low chance of triple cast Spellblade abilities. And this is one of those few situations where this is actually more descriptive than Enlears is. Enlears is a little ambiguous on it, and I, and I was, because I trust Enlears so much, um, I was confused at a long time what this Spellblade actually, or this uh, LMR actually did. So this says 10% chance to, to dual cast Spellblade abilities twice. Uh, so if you do something twice, twice, that's two times two, right? That's four times. Um, so that's that's the way I viewed this. No, it's 10% uh, chance to triple cast. And uh, I'll go into what that means um, in conjunction with this LM2 in a second. Dorgon's armor is actually useful. Yeah, oh yeah, it definitely is. That plus earth damage is very, very, very important. Epic Wander says, if you get USB and any of the BSBs, the order would be USB first uh, for longer burst mode, so more command casts, or BSB first for the attach element. I would BSB first, uh, yeah, I would BSB first for the attach element, so you get the uh, plus eighty percent damage on the USB cast. Um, because remember, you do get more commands off. Um, but at the same time, a lot of the things that you're going to be doing with these commands could also be mimicked with five-star abilities. So it's not as essential that you have access to those burst commands. Really, you just want to use the, the BSB for the 25-second burst mode, then move into USB for the plus 80% damage on entry cast, which is a, a ton, obviously. Um, and then you basically be matching them up because the X mode starting from there is 15 seconds. So they'll both be expiring at about the same time, and hopefully you have another entrust so you can start the, the cycle all over again. 
at least the uh, theory crafting in my head, that's I feel like that's how it will work. Okay, so what I wanted to talk about with this LMR is it's a it's a triple cast. So uh, you have a 10% chance every time you use a spell blade to triple cast it. So you would cast it, and then if it procs that 10%, you would cast it two more times. And it's important to understand how that works with other casts. They do... Stack is not the right word. I, I've been using... They work in conjunction with each other. So um, his LM2, if you're using this at the same time, it's a 35% chance to dual cast Spellblade abilities, right? Uh, so every time you use a Spellblade with these two together, you have a 35% chance to, do, to, to add on to dual cast and a 10% chance to triple cast. Um, both work together. So you can have these both at the same time, and they both work together. So, though I, I broke these these down into dual cast and triple cast, there's actually an easier way to go about uh, listing what these do. Um, and that is, a dual cast is plus one attack. Triple cast, plus two attacks. So if you hit that 35%, then you will attack twice. If you hit that 10%, you will attack three times. If you hit both of them together, and you can, it's like if it's a separate roll every time you attack. So they could both be hit at the same time. You would get plus one from his LM2, right here. It's plus one attack. And if the 10% also hits, you get plus two attacks in addition to his first attack that you obviously are doing anyway to try and get these it's four attacks that is a uh, a quad cast the 10 percent chance for a quad cast no a less less sorry because you have to add. how do chases interact with dual casts uh uh dual cast cannot proc chases chases will only happen on the initial attack so uh, say you're using his USB. Uh, if you're using his USB and you all of your percentages hit, right? You get four attacks at the same strength as your first attack. And then, right, I, I don't know when in the chain it, it happens, so I'm not going to say then. But you also get the chase. So you can attack four times... As well as, uh, as well as chase. The, the chase is 100%, so you will be getting the chase regardless if you have his X mode active. Yeah. Um, as uh, Zadal has noted in chat, there is another way to dual cast, or be the better way to put it, to give yourself plus one attack, and that is using a record materia. There's a uh, 13. 13 or yeah, I think it's a 13% chance to dual cast spell blades with uh, with Bart's. Bart's has an RM that does that, so you could potentially get plus one more on top of that in Pentacast. Hey, L man. Uh, however, that 13% is not good. It's actually not good uh, because that's only a 13% chance to add one more attack. So, because you're you're doubling the amount of attacks that you ha that happen when you get that 13%, it's actually not good. Um, it's not good because that's only a 13% damage increase. There are much better RMs that you could be using to increase your damage potential with parts, and that would be a 30% damage increase. Uh, I, I did mention improved spell. Are you talking about the ability overhaul and how they get increased to four hits? Then yes. Um, so that 13% damage increase is actually just is less than half as good as getting a damage increase of 30%. And even worse, if you want to uh, use the Celeste RM that she gets at level 99 for 40%. Um, the, the difference between the two, obviously, as I mentioned uh, very thoroughly when I was talking about Galoof's um, Legend Dive, is that Celeste's Spellblade increase 40% only happens on um, only happens for Spellblade abilities, while the 30% uh, 
uh, happens for spellblade ability. It happens for all damage that you do. So um, that would also include spell break, break usage. Bart is one of those few characters where I would, I would almost always use the Celeste forty percent instead, because he is so ability based. He is, he is made to use abilities, and burst commands. If they operate on the same thing, so the the super soul break casts are fine. They're great. That's why you use his BSB before you'd use the OS, uh, the USB for increased damage, right? But <laughs> He does so much ability damage, thanks to this chase and the the opportunity for for dual casting, that he actually gets such a, an extreme benefit from dealing spellblade damage that it will probably overtake the amount of damage that you get from inclu including uh, soul breaks. So, uh, just to try to sum that up in easier terms. You have two options, 30% increased damage overall, or 40% increased damage when you're using Spellblade abilities or commands. Um, I think, like, I don't have the math craft on this, and obviously both of these are going to be fantastic on Bart's. I think the 40% is a better choice than 30% overall. Um... But you're not you're not gonna you're not gonna go wrong with either. It's, it, I wouldn't worry about screwing that that part of your your min maxing up. Um. So, wow. So Barth gets this LMR. Isn't that his LM? What do you mean? No, his LMR is ten percent chance to triple cast. So plus two attacks. That's a a whole nother bag of tricks instead of 13% chance to just add one one attack. <laughs> that that also counts epic, but uh, at the same time, there's other there's other uh, there's other 30 percenters you can use. Uh, Tyro's 30% when hitting weakness also applies to all damage that he would do in those situations, and then there's 30% elemental damage which should also apply to all damage that you do in those situations. So there's actually three 30% RMs available for that uh, those situations. Sorry for the overuse of the word situations. 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 Okay, I'm done. Uh, Truth Seeker is one of my most used RMs. Yeah, absolutely. And I actually did a test. I, I did a test. Um, there's some incorrect information, and I don't have video proof uh, I'm just asking you to, to go with my word um, that people have said that the way plus elemental damage and plus any other damage, like uh, Truth Seeker versus plus 30% wind damage. Uh, one is better than the other because one of them is additive and one's multiplicative, so the, the calculation is different, so that makes one of them better than the other. Um, it's incorrect. Uh, they're all the same. So 30% is 30%. So no need to fret about min-maxing those. Um, so Bart's LMR is really good. Uh, that 10% chance to add two more attacks is pretty fantastic. Uh, so let's go on to the next LMR. Uh, I, I did go over this briefly because Ferris is uh, Legend Materia are new. Uh, Valiant Princess. And as somebody noted in chat, this is a plus wind light armor. I just want to verify. Now that's a five star. Oh, no, we want it to be a five star. Why was I thinking there was your USB? Uh, yeah, so it's not listed on that list. Correct. Um, it is plus 20% wind damage. Uh, it, and that's something I did not know until today, until I believe it was Shimra that mentioned that. So thank you. Uh, that's even more value on this banner that I didn't, <laughs> I didn't think was there. Um, 
So this is a plus wind damage uh, light armor. It's really nice. This is really nice. Um, so let's take a look at the LMR itself. Up to medium physical damage. Um, I'll go over again what those percentages actually are. Warrior Princess is increases damage dealt by 3, 6, 9, 12, or 20% if 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5 of the stats, uh, target stats are lowered. If you're full breaking, um, that breaks down 4 stats, so you're getting plus 12% damage. Uh, if you're Penta breaking or using her USB 2 and full breaking, which would give you mind on her USB 2 and the other 4 stats, um, my attack magic and mind on her USB 2 and um, 4 stats with full break, that would mean 5 stats would get lowered and you get plus 20% uh, increased damage. Um, because she's a support and because she is a dancer, it's not that impactful, but in situations where she does deal damage, uh, it's, it's actually kind of nice uh, because 20% is a big number. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, if I get Barthes' USB, it's an instant legend dive. That's not even... No question. No question. I'll do it on stream. I'll hold my pulls and legend dive him. Because I'll be so giddy, I won't want to pull after that anyway. Uh, I agree on what Elman just said. Ferris is less sure because uh, she uses bravery motes, which in my future, in the stuff that I want to pull on, is really contested. And I really love her LM2, but it, it's kind of crazy that she may get over, like... Her, her Legend Dive may not be as valuable to me as other people's Legend Dive that use similar modes to her. Similar or the same. Like Ramza and Shelk, for instance. Uh, and that too. Like, exactly. Rams, Ramza and Shelk are both huge Magicite supports. Well, Ferris is not. Uh, her USB 1 breaks 5 stats at once. Her USB 2, which is the one I'm referring to on this banner, breaks only 3. Uh, but if you're talking about uh, her USB breaking five stats, which helps out her LMR, then yeah, you're right. Sorry. So yeah, I mean, they're, they go together well. Her USBs go together well. <laughs> Only three. Uh, her USBs go together extremely well with her LMR. Uh, so that's our LMR section. Uh, definitely Bart's leading the way again. Still sure you'll di dive Shelk? No, I'm not. Uh, I don't have to make that decision until the Final Fantasy VII event, and I, I, I probably won't be able to answer that for you until I get there. Okay, so next up, we go into the Super Soul Break section, which, I mean, up until now, we've got a pretty fantastic banner, so hopefully it doesn't fall off that much. <laughs> um, first up, we have Dorgon's Sword, uh, Dorgon's Super Soul Break, which is important to note. Very, very important to note. Uh, that 8 means small wind damage up. That is a sword. With small wind damage up. That makes it the only sword in the game. With small wind damage up. So, Bartz, Cloud, Zack. This is, this is their relic. This is it. Um, or Bartz can use spears, so he could actually use Lunith's uh, OSB, which is a 6-star. That's awesome. Uh, but that's not available on the same banner that has all the other... that the long list of stuff that makes Bartz really good. This showing up on this banner makes it... Yes, Bartz would absolutely love to use this sword. I don't have Lunith's OSB. I know a lot of people don't, because it hasn't shown up on, uh, you know, super banners. They're not heavily pulled banners. That's a better way to pull up, put it. Um, this is a, a huge, huge, fantastic relic for people. So even without looking at the Super Soul Break, I already know this is this is something that I want. I want to pull this. And now let's look at the Super Soul Break. Uh, Carnalisk, thank you very much for the follow. 
Uh, six. Single target, random wind physical, self defense minus 30%, and party attack and magic plus 20, uh, 30%. That's okay. Uh, Lunath BSB also has wind up. Yes, it does. There are more uh, relics that have wind up. Just not swords. Uh, I I agree, Zadal. Lunas OSB banner was good. It was just overshadowed uh, by the second banner in the event, which obviously had Ingus BSB, Onion Knight BSB, and Dash BSB. That was that was the the nutsack of the event. The crown jewels. But the first banner was good. It was good. I remember suggesting it to people that had uh, Onion Knight BSB already. If they wanted to continue uh, improving their Final Fantasy 3 synergy. So anyway, we do have a hit in the Super Soul Break section. Whew. That's a good start. Uh, and we lose a lot of that momentum here. Oh, good. I'm glad I stopped dropping frames. Okay, uh, we lose a lot of that momentum here, and I already went over this, so it's not like it's much of a surprise to people. Ferris's Bracers uh, is fine. It, it's fine by itself, but uh, if you do end up pulling your USB off the banner, this this relic is poison. It's it's plus ten attack, and uh, you're not hoping to pull plus ten attack uh, off of a banner. Uh, it, that's just that's just sugarcoating a really bad situation. So this is uh, this is a very poor two percenter on the banner. Uh, next up, we have uh, the Jujitsu Gi for Galoof and uh, Inner Peace Party Critical fifty percent High Regen and End Fire. That's actually really good. Uh, that's a really good Super Soul Break. Um, it's it's not a good relic. It, it's just shitty old light armor, but that's actually really good. Um, Party critical 50% is a nice buff to have on a party. Uh, high regen is, is fine, but it's the end fire that really gets me because that turns Galoof into a viable member of a fire team because we get uh, we have fires within currently for a five-star monk ability, uh, which Galoof can use very well, and we also have another five-star monk ability coming soon. Uh... That is four hits, and Fires Within eventually gets a buff to four hits, and actually becomes a really powerful uh, fire ability. Uh, this is actually pretty damn good. Uh, party buff, and gives him the ability to do damage himself. I, I actually kind of like this. I don't want more than one. <laughs> um, I do not want more than one, but if I do get one, I won't be unhappy with it. So I'm okay with that. It's definitely not Ferris's super, that's for damn sure. But I have, currently on my fire team, I have Refia. And, whoop, the list stops there. Um, so that's, that'd be really nice for me. I, again, uh, I, my emphasis there is look to see what you have and what you have your capabilities versus uh, a Magisite situation. Or, you know, an elemental... You're building your elemental team and say, okay, well, I could plug this guy in and he'd actually be pretty good for the fight. Uh, obviously, the critical 50% doesn't really work that right, great with Refia's BSB-1, but it does eventually work very well with Refia's USB. So that's something to consider, too. And Refia's USB shows up on a one of the best banners that we've ever seen in the game. Um, so that's also something to consider. I could use, with, uh, use this with Galoof's BSB. Uh, that is also true. Galoof's BSB is actually a really good fire BSB, and they work together well because it's in peril fire. I would even consider using an entrust bot on him for this. Um, or with his BSB and Super Silver Break together. Uh, just because of the benefits that it could have. Because if you end up with extra Soul Break, there's no reason why you would never like shy away from using his BSB again because it's in peril. Uh, he'd actually be an entrustable character with those two Soul Breaks. It's probably a, a situation not a lot of people considered, but I think you should. I think you should be happier if you got this than, than you thought you would be. Um, 
and last on the banner is something that's uh yeah. uh, we're glad it's the one percent it's uh it's a gimmick it's a fun gimmick and it's actually been used to effectiveness sometime recently uh against a certain king tonberry um four single damage physical attacks and self unyielding fist um unyielding fist I believe for 25 seconds, yeah, for 25 seconds, makes you invulnerable, invulnerable to everything, including, uh, including statuses, like positive statuses. Uh, so, it's not really that effective for dealing damage. It's effective for overcoming overcoming weird things, like the King Tonberry in the multiplayer fight saying, okay, well, I'm going to instantly kill, automatically kill, do 100,000 damage, or, yeah, 100,000 damage, and uh, instant death proc the person in your group with the highest amount of uh, HP, like Nemesis and King Tonberry. So what you do with Galoof is make sure he has the highest HP, then use the Unyielding Fist, and he can't be reduced below the highest HP, so he just effectively effectively becomes a taunter for those. It is not something that you want to get unless you just want to have a little fun every now and then. And I admit, I have used it and it, it has been fun. Uh, just not not standard meta stuff. Okay, um, so that was I usually don't do a Q&A after one banner. I usually do it after two, but I want to hear people's thoughts. On, uh, on this banner and am I overhyping this because I want people to try not try don't play devil don't devil's advocate because I'm just gonna shoot that down if you have like misgivings that you believe in about this banner I want to hear them My holes are a 3%. I have a 3% hole. Ferris is super. And Galoof super. <laughs> sure, sketch. Well, sure, but I wouldn't use him without a soul break. Yeah, this is a 1%. This is a 1%. So I wouldn't use Galoof without a soul break. And yeah, I, I have said that this 1%er here is not a good thing to get. The emergency is maintenance smirked. Did you see that uh, Magicite Dungeons has been released? And uh, the 30th anniversary festival is at the end of September. A lot of, lot of information came out today. Um, so if I get Galoof Super Soul Break, he isn't hard to use because he's, he's a monk. He's easy to use. Then you know what the, mer the emergency was, Merc. Um, and fire. Use five star monk abilities. The 30th anniversary festival banners will not be mined until this event is done. Um, and I had always taken the 30th anniversary festival banners into consideration when I plan on pulling on this, and I consider this to be a higher priority. Well, it's, I mean, it, it's an exaggeration, sure, but it's a lot of new information that a lot of people want to discuss.
Is it confirmed that after Final Fantasy X, Final Fantasy V is the next event? What? Final Fantasy X? There are no Final Fantasy X events anytime in the near future. And there are no Final Fantasy V events after Final Fantasy X events. Unless you meant to put an I in there for 11. In which case, yes, it has been confirmed. A week from today will be the Final Fantasy V event. Oh, no problem, Father. I'm just having a hard time keeping up with chat. It comes with being a long-winded, long-winded fuck. Any more zero, Lemon? Uh, did you mean there? Is there any more type zero? In which case, yes, there is a, a Final Fantasy Type-0 event coming in about four months. Alright, so I'm going to move on to the next banner. Uh, which is going to do its best. It's going to try to live up to what we just saw. Uh, first off, we get a, a fantastic start. Uh, we have X Death's USB, Whale Whisker. The 9 stands for RS Small Dark Damage Up. Uh, USB, Neo Grand Cross. 6 Area of Effect, Dark Null Elemental Damage, Self Grand Cross. Money Time. Uh, party Magic Mind, 30%. Pretty good. Uh, this, is a, this is a great USB. Very, very simple. It's very simple. Like... Celeste's BSB2, and just very effective. Uh, th this is great. Uh, there's very little I can say about this. I think Xdeath is a pretty good character. Um, and on top of the fact that he had Grand Cross already, which wasn't bad. Um, and now he gets Neo Grand Cross, which is really a really nice, awesome USB. I uh, like it a lot. So, yes. Next up, Bart's is OSB, which is, eh. The thing about OSBs, and why I say eh, it's, it's a weaker OSB. Um, and that's one of them, but it's more the fact that it's showing up on this banner instead of the first. Uh, it's it's just okay. Uh, Bart's can definitely make use of it. Because Bart's is a fantastic character as of this event. And uh, it's nice to have a, a, a strong finisher on him. Even if it's not as strong as others. Um, so it's good. And I would, I would personally like to have it. Um, but it just doesn't really do much for this banner. Unless you have everything for Bart's already. So that would require you, because Bart's is not a really that good of a character right now. Um, so what you would need to do is pull heavily on Bart's, uh, the first uh, banner, and get all the, the things that take it takes to make Bart's a really good character on that banner, and then pull on this banner. It's just not something uh, anyone should have expected to have uh, the resources to go for. So I don't like this being here. Uh, next up, we have Gogo's Rod, uh, which 10 is a plus water damage rod, so that's a pretty good relic. Uh, the BSB itself is kind of, mm, and Gogo's kind of, eh. however, uh, the rod itself is pretty good. Um, you really would wish for more out of a BSB slot, uh, so this is kind of a, a kind of a chase relic because it's uh, it it's low low value from a high point. From, from a high-end part of the van. Yeah, that, that's true to Raccoon. His OSB is just... Yeah. Uh, next up, we have Gogo... Or, sorry, not Gogo. Uh, Gloof Sledgehammer. As I talked about with Gloof's uh, Super Soul Break on the first banner, this is actually pretty damn good by itself and gets even better with the Super Soul Break. Um, it's just on this banner and not the other one. So, it, same situation. Uh... You don't have the good things for Bart's coming into this event, so 
you're pulling on the first banner to get the things that it would take to make this banner good. Uh, but this this is kind of like a reverse situation where a uh, Super Soul Break is fine by itself, but this BSB is much better by itself and the two work together. Um, so this is not a bad pickup. This is not a bad pickup. Uh, right now I'm looking at Galoop BSB and XDeaths USB being the two better points of this banner. And next up we have Ferris's BSB, which is, I use it all the damn time. I don't know how often I would use it if I had her USB 2. Uh, I'd have to I'd have to check that, but I do know that it's a fantastic soul break um, because it's on Ferris, so it's it's a nice thing to have if you got the things for Ferris. But this again runs into a problem. Not as bad as Bart's. Not even close to being as bad as Bart's, because Ferris can be a, a really awesome character with just this, while Bart's cannot be a really awesome character with just his OSB. Um, but, yeah. Uh, eventually, I mean, already I'm starting to see her BSB fall off, so I want other and better things for Ferris, like her USB 2. Uh, so I wouldn't be as thrilled to pull this now as I would have back then. Um, this would just be a complimentary piece. I think I would too, Max. Uh, Max Rage. I would probably use her USB to a whole lot more than her BSB because she has a great ability pool, and I can see myself just using her ability pool often. Um, yeah. All right, so moving on. So that's kind of a... It's not a ringing endorsement so far. Uh, we have a good relic. We have some good soul breaks, some good bursts. Um, but nothing really defining other than XF's USB. Nothing like... This is... E e equals or exceeds the high end that we should expect from banners. Uh, none of this does that. Moving on to the Legend Materias, uh, Galoof's Legend Materia Relic is good. Uh, low chance to double cast Monk Abilities. His BSB is Monk Abilities, and his Super Soul Break, you'll be using Monk Abilities with it. Uh, so this is actually a good LMR. And x Deaths start a battle with Endark. Uh, Helm is 14. That is Dark Resistance. Oops. Um, so not really that desirable, but still better than most an element starts because uh, Xdeath has a trouble giving himself Endark. He only has like I think a Super Soul Break that does it, which you don't want to be using. Uh, the things that make Xdeath good are his BSB and USB. Uh, so that's. That's good for this. Sorry, I, I made it seem like that was bad. That's good for this because it makes uh, it provides a benefit that you don't find on his BSB or USB. And what's nice, uh, I don't know if it's nice. Yeah, it's not nice. It doesn't matter. If you use uh, his USB first uh, to start the battle to get that magic and mind buff on everyone, or you wait to use it uh, for a few turns using uh, abilities to exploit weakness to generate bar. It's not going to matter because are you use the abilities then the soul break or use the soul break then the abilities. It's it's all the same. Um, so that's a good LMR, but uh, Galoof def definitely benefits from his more. The difference here is that Xdeath is probably an overall better character with his USB. Uh, next up, we have the supers. We have Krill's uh, Sheep Song, which is old as balls. Uh, and really not that desirable. Fire Whip. Is there anyone that can actually make use of a Fire Whip other than Krill? And Krill has nothing on this banner that will allow her to make use of that. Uh, so that's that's not a relic we're really looking for right now. I have a an 8-star Fire Lash. Oh. But I rarely ever use it. Um, it's a, it's just a synergy relic for some people. There is elemental gear, and then there's low value elemental gear, and that's one of them. So cheap song is something if you don't have uh, a mage shout, but 
there are a lot of them available at this point, and there be there will be even better ones in the future. Uh, so it's certainly not that valuable of a super anymore. Uh, next up, Mace of Zeus for Lena. Super Soul Break, uh, Pride of Tycoon. This is actually a decent Medica. Uh, Kiraga Medica and Party Resistance plus 50%. That's not, that's not bad at all. Um, decent Medica if you're in need of a Final Fantasy V Medica. So good Sid Mission Relic there. Uh, X-Death Inu Scourge. Uh, Party Magic and Resistance plus 30%. Um, and single target Dark Damage. I believe that's plus Dark Damage. Yeah. That's not bad. It's a party buff. It's I wouldn't be looking to use that on uh, an A team, but more submission stuff. Um, but I guess it could slot onto a darkness team in Magicite. It'd have to be a dark mage team, which isn't that hard. There's a ton of dark mages in the game, so it's not bad. And Gogo's Hat, seventeen small water resistance, uh, party attack magic and haste. Good Super Soul Break, bad character, uh, better Relic than it sounds. I know I went over this for the last Final Fantasy V event, but uh, minor Water Resistance means it would overwrite Water Weakness uh, or Water Vulnerability, which you can give yourself by equipping uh, the Gigas Armlet. Um, so sneaky, powerful, not powerful, sneaky benefit to that Relic. Yeah, Mog's Bell. I I wish it would have been better at doing what it did, but well, the, the Soul Break's actually good, but not as a not as a relic. All right, so I'm at the end of that. Uh, obviously, less much less to be get, get excited about here. Um, some good submission stuff because you really don't want to use Gogo -Go outside of Final Fantasy V. Um, even with this good soul break. His super soul break, uh, or excess super is, is all right. Uh, Lena's super is good for submissions. Actually an excellent, excellent thing there. So I would say the low end here, uh, fails in comparison to the first banner, because on the first banner we have, uh, Dorgon's sword really, uh, which is going to contribute to a lot of A-teams, where none of this is going to do that. That is something the first banner does not ha uh, has over this, is that it actually has an A-team uh, an A-team influence. Well, this is... None of this does that. Except maybe Gogo's Hat, in very, very few situations. Uh, Legend Materia... They're fine. That's good. The bursts are... Mm. It's... It, it's speaking relatively, right? Ferris's BSB is good, but I'd rather, in most situations, be using your USB 2 instead. So if I'm gonna pull on the banners, I get a one percent chance to pull Ferris's BSB one on this banner, and a one percent chance to pull Ferris's USB two on the first banner. So which which should I go for? Well, the answer for me is pretty easy. Uh, Galoof's BSB is nice. There are no magic buffs above thirty percent. It's uh, they definitely treat it a little different. It's more supposed to be a stacking thing, while well, the 50% attack is supposed to be... This is the only uh, attack buff you need. Galoof's BSB is good. It's good. It's probably the best... best of these three. This is Final Fantasy XI music? I don't know, is it? I believe so, yeah. I don't know why is it though. Is it the uh, the fifty percent reduced attack and magic, scaring you off? 
Is it so powerful that you don't want to feel like you're cheating? Uh, Gogo's BSB is whatever, uh, but the rod is a plus water rod, which is pretty cool. So it's just nice to have. It's whale bait, I think. That's I think the best way to look at that. Like this this banner is whale bait. Uh, X Death's USB is the the one relic on this banner that's legitimately awesome, and then you have Bart's OSB, which is something that whales will want to complete their Bart's. Uh, Gogo -Go is a water rod, water rod that they're going to want to use to complete water mages. Uh, Galoof's BSB is is just good. Ferris's BSB is something that people are going to want in uh, addition to Ferris's uh, other things. Um, this is this banner is whale bait. Yeah, there's so many wind, wind and perils. I have one wind and peril. And that's Ferris' Super Soul Break, and I would obviously much prefer her USB, too. So, I mean, it makes sense that you would be less enthused about her USB, too, as other people would, because it sounds like you have a lot of wind imperils. I don't I don't wish it was Max. Um, back in the day, before the ability overhaul, I would have said yes. But now, uh, five star uh, spell blades are just better than his BSB one, and the downfall of his BSB one is always going to be there regardless. And that is the fact that it is a non-elemental entry. So, five-star abilities make his commands not that great, and uh, his entry is just bad. Would you consider 99ing Fang with her BSB for Wind Magicites? No, I would not. Well, I consider 99ing Fang for her uh, level 99 record materia. This plus 30% damage done with, uh, with a spear equipped. So, yeah, sure. Because there's a... That's a much better benefit in my eyes. That record material is awesome, and I've used it many times. I think Lulu's good with her USB. Definitely redeems herself. I mean, I have zero things for Fang, and I 99'd her. Zero. I place a high priority on good RMs. <laughs> 